can Boris Johnson survive? Mark Seddon, welcome uh, to the show. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's looking dodgy for Boris Johnson, not for the, the rather flimsy uh, reason of a birthday cake and so on, but because, in the words of Mr. Macmillan, it's not one damn thing, it's one damn thing after another. Isn't that right? Yeah, well, it is. But, you know, as you were saying that, I was thinking, you know, the, the epithet uh, gate is is attached to everything, so it's party gate, but we never have Iraq gate or Kelly gate. <laughs> it's, 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 it's attached to absolutely everything. So it, it almost minimises scandal in a way uh, and, uh, and misbehaviour and lying. And the thing, of course, about Boris Johnson, what we do know is that he just is a liar. I mean, Michael Howard had to... Uh, sack him for being a liar. This is his. This is whole. His whole career has been built around lies. The public knows that he's a liar. Um, but of course, at the last election, his main opponent, Jeremy Corbyn, was seen by much of the commentariat as a existential threat. Whereas uh, Boris Johnson, well, here we are. It does look as though he's in uh, a kind of tailspin. But all those people who have written him off before, by the way, rather prematurely, uh, ignore the fact that uh, there doesn't really seem to be much else on offer for the Conservative Party behind him. Uh, and also that uh, despite everything, you know, the, the official opposition isn't really taking him down. And in fact, Boris Johnson's biggest threat is himself. Yes, uh, we'll come to Keir Starmer uh, in a minute, for it is he who is the leader of the opposition. We should remind uh, the audience, because many people will have forgotten that or not ever have known it. But one of the points you make there was to be my next question to you, because it is true that if not Boris Johnson, whom? Who in the Tory ranks is a credible prime minister? if Johnson were to fall? Well, I mean, you know, I'm just, I'm not a pundit, you know, I, but I read stuff and I look around and I, I look at the quality of public figures in, in high office. And like many people in this country, I kind of despair. Um, Liz Truss, Michael Gove, Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, he was, he was going to be the, the shoe in. Uh, until a few weeks ago. Uh, I mean, what we do know is that you know, if Boris Johnson, if these local election results are as bad as many of the commentators are again saying, not, not borne out by national opinion polls, by the way, but let's see what happens. Well, you know, I, I imagine there'll be a bitter, uh, unpleasant struggle in the top of the Tory party as there usually is and they'll come up with somebody else but but who I don't know and I I it's it, you, you struggle to identify somebody who has that election winning ability that Johnson has clearly got how what would constitute a bad result on the 5th of May mark well i imagine i mean if if there's extensive council losses right across the country and an, a, a, and a number of the members of parliament who got their seats at the last at the last election in traditional labor areas the so-called red wall seats if they start looking at their uh, local council results and see that their constituencies are going to be in in trouble uh, and they're going to have to, they're going to be struggling to hold on come the next election i i, I suppose it, it it builds up and of course as as we know in britain you know, once the story starts running, it doesn't stop. Uh, you know, it'll be we'll be back into this territory of letters of no confidence being handed into the 1922 committee and all the rest of it. Um, but look, who knows uh, what we're seeing, uh, I suppose, out there. What I'm hearing is that there isn't a great deal of uh, response uh, on the doorstep. To, uh, there's kind of almost a plague on all of your houses. And that's a pretty that's a pretty worrying thing for a parliamentary democracy, I would have thought. But you know, the national opinion polls show that the Labour Party is perhaps a couple of points ahead nationally. Um, well, I mean, we'll see what happens at a local level, uh, because it, as, as you know, George, better than anybody, you've been in Parliament many times, you know, it's what happens on the day. 
Yes. Now, uh, because of the hour, let me uh, truncate our conversation for this evening, at least, and ask you about the bizarre statement made by uh, Sir Keith Starmer that uh, Jeremy Corbyn, only recently the leader of the party, with Keir Starmer sitting in his shadow cabinet and asking the country to vote for him, as he needed to do in, in the election of 2017 and 29, that Jeremy Corbyn will never again be a Labour MP. Why? Because of his attack on NATO. When did it become a part of the Labour Party's rules that you had to love NATO? Well, you don't have to love NATO or love the bomb or do any of that. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn, many people may disagree with him in the Labour Party, but he comes from a fine old tradition that um, Michael Foote would have recognised. I mean, Michael Foote would have disagreed with him on certain things, of course, because Michael Foote was in favour of uh, sending a task force to the Falkland Islands. But no, I mean, the thing about all of this is that it's, I suppose that it probably no longer bothers Jeremy Corbyn that much that he may not be able to stand as a Labour candidate because he'll stand and win only, uh, anyway, I, I guess, as an independent. But it's, I think what it demonstrates more than anything else is that uh, Sir Keir Starmer, who, who, who ran clearly under an entirely false prospectus, um, because he's disavowed everything that he stood on. I mean, it's quite extraordinary. You talk about Boris Johnson being a liar, and of course, Johnson's lies are really rather more serious. But the thing is that Starmer's ran on entirely false prospectus on a on a programme that his predecessor was running on. He supported Jeremy Corbyn, and now it's really rather petty. Uh, he won't let him back in under any circumstance. Look, I mean, the, the, the thing is, for an awful lot of youngsters out there, whether the commentariat likes it or not, I mean, Corbyn represented um, hope to a lot of them. And um, they don't really like the way he's been treated. And of course, that transfers into the fact that lots of people have now left the Labour Party and won't go and work for it. So it's kind of completely self-defeating. If he was a bigger person, a real leader, Sakir, he would welcome this guy back. What's the, what's the problem, really? Mark Seddon, as always, illuminating, coruscating even. Thank you for joining us on the Mother <laughs> of you. All Thank Talk you. Shows.